first, uh, we all, uh, all Americans experienced the horror on 9-11 of airplanes being turned into cruise missiles and turned against us, um, bringing down the World Trade Center, hitting the Pentagon, and attempting to hit uh, this building. Um, it still remains the crown jewel of aviation. We know that uh, Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula is still intent on this. We know that ISIS in the Sinai was able to pull off Sharm el-Sheikh, uh, the downing of a Russian airliner. Uh, as I mentioned in my uh, opening remarks, I recently had uh, experience to go to northern Sinai where ISIS exists. I also looked at the Cairo airport, which has uh, a daily flight into JFK airport. And I have to say I'm concerned about the state of security there. I'm also concerned of the state of security at Charles de Gaulle where uh, 70 extremists were, were weeded out of the process, and we have 50 flights per day flying into the United States. This is the external operation uh, that keeps me up at night. Can you tell me, sir, what TSA is doing to protect these last point of uh, departure uh, airports, particularly in these high threat uh, areas? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and like you, I, I'm, I'm very focused on uh, the safety of inbound flights to the United States. So we look at the, there are a number of things we do for last point of departure airports. First and foremost is working through the international community to, to continually try to raise global standards to the highest possible level. In addition, with respect to last point of departure airports, we put additional standards and requirements in place uh, for any aircraft that intends to fly directly to the United States without any intermediate stops. That includes uh, screening of passengers, screening of cargo, screening of the aircraft itself, as well as vetting of, the, of any individuals that are on board those flights uh, coming to the United States. Uh, in addition to that, following the Metrojet incident, we put a, a number of additional security measures in place at certain airports of interest and concern in the region that have added significant additional requirements to uh, aircraft and, uh, and personnel uh, intending to fly directly uh, to the United States from those LPDs. So well, again, I think this legislation I mentioned that's sitting in the Senate that has not been passed would help you and give you authorities to assist these airports overseas with, with flights coming directly into the United States, and yet it has not it's been stalled. You know, when I didn't see uh, full body scanners in Cairo, that concerns me because of the non-metallic IED threat. Now, this can be fixed, and, it, and we can't even share a proper intelligence with, with the Egyptians at that airport to properly vet their own employees and screen passengers. I worry about this, uh, sir, and I hope that I can work with you uh, to expedite this process. And I've met with the Egyptians, the President and the Ambassador, working with them. I think they're working in good faith with the United States to, to ensure the safety of Americans as well. With respect to the lines, um, in the President's budget request, um, there was a request for an additional 350 screeners. However, uh, two weeks ago, TSA came back to the Congress and asked for a, to have 34 million reprogrammed, and we granted that request for 768 uh, TSOs, um, which will come online, I think, by the end of June, I hope, early July. Um, but this was really not our first rodeo. Why didn't we see this uh, coming? Well, that's a good question. And, and I, got, I as, as you know, when I came on board last year uh, on the heels of the um, IG's results, uh, it, it was immediately apparent to me that one of the challenges we were going to have is, is enough screening staff to man the checkpoints effectively. Uh, as you recall, we, we stopped a practice known as managed inclusion, which was the practice of randomly assigning people out of the standard lanes, unvetted individuals uh, just randomly assigned to the pre-check lane. Uh, one of the discoveries out of our root cause analysis and in working with the IG was that introduced unacceptable risk into the system. In doing that, I knew that that would dramatically increase the number of people back in the standard lanes, and we weren't staffed to the level we needed to man all the lanes possible. So I came to Congress, and uh, Congress uh, was very uh, uh, gracious in granting a request to halt any further reductions. We had planned to drop another 1,600 people in FY16, and then when we got the appropriations bill in December, we immediately began to do accelerated hiring. 
the additional 768 is on top of what we've requested for FY17 and, uh, in my opinion, is necessary to meet the near-term challenge of the increased volume this summer and then moving forward. So we've been working very aggressively to move that, but as you know, there's a, there's a lag associated with uh, getting the funding and then getting getting it hired. Uh, the well, and I agree with that. It, uh, but you have a lot of part-time employees uh, on we staff. Do. And uh, do you intend to make a, a second uh, request to reprogram uh, monies that have already been appropriated to TSA to move part-time employees to full-time? Well, I think it's important that we that we move more part-timers to full-time because it drops my attrition rate dramatically and in its instant cap capability uh, that I can put to use. Uh, we're working through the uh, administration now on whether there's a, a need for a second reprogramming request. And well, I think about 20 percent of your employees are part-time. In my judgment, they're already trained to do the job, and uh, it seems to me that would cause a overnight uh, would would ramp up mm -hmm. Uh, your personnel force to deal with the long lines, and we know we anticipate those going into the summer uh, season. As I mentioned uh, earlier, we plan to introduce legislation. We met with 30 airport um, authorities and, and uh, over 30 airline representatives. Uh, they expressed concerns that there was not the proper uh, coordination with at the local level with the field um, security directors at TSA, that they didn't have flexibility. Uh, that the staffing model didn't reflect the peak uh, time that the flights were coming in. And in large part, this would solve a lot of these staffing problems uh, if there was better communication at the local level. And these local directors were empowered to make decisions based on what's happening at, at the local airports. Do you agree with that? I, I absolutely agree with that. In fact, one of the first things I did last fall when I brought all my uh, federal security directors together for the first time is to is to direct them to 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 take responsibility for their local region. I've given them full authority. Uh, I like institutionalizing ideas like that so that they st so that they stay because I think that's an important way to go forward. And that's what this legislation would do. It would require TSA to basically assess its staffing um, uh, allocation model and also mandate that they get local input from the airlines and the airports. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Concept? In fact, that's, that's, what, that's what we're doing right now, and, uh, and I'd like to make that a permanent practice at, at TSA. Another uh, element in the bill is the TSA's behavioral detection officers who um, roam around the airport. There are about 3,000 of them. If they can be redeployed to the front screening end process, to me, that would help solve a lot of these uh, problems. I think the ranking member mentioned this mm -hmm. in his opening sta statement. Do you agree? Uh, that that would be a, an appropriate response. Well, uh, we are redeploying the behavioral detection officers now. I, I think it's important to also note that behavioral detection is 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 still an important element, but it's it's how you use it effectively. I think that that, that matters, and so I can use those officers uh, directly at things like document checking positions uh, to serve as divest officers, places where they can still monitor. And, uh, and, and look at behavior, but at the same time directly contribute to the uh, efficiency of the checkpoint. And finally, do you uh, support the, well, I can't say, uh, do you support the concept of expanding TSA's pre-check program, which I think would move a lot of people in the long lines into the pre-check lines, which I think would solve uh, many of these problems as well? Uh, absolutely. In fact, that's one of, the, one of my uh, fundamental priorities is to, is to dramatically expand the pre-check population and dramatically expand the capability to enroll people in pre-check. And so I know they're, they're putting a lot of blame on you for this crisis, but we passed a bill out of this committee to expand the, the TSA pre-check program, which would have helped help this situation, and yet it's sitting there in the Senate, stalled in the Senate. They could have helped this problem months ago, and it's unconscionable that the Senate hasn't acted on this, and I call upon the Senate Sometimes they don't listen to us in the House. But for the sake of the American people, it's time for the Senate to act on this important uh, legislation. With that, I now recognize the ranking member.